Um, I'll do a roll call, I guess. Bruce Allen. Here. Uh, Thad Taylor. Um, here in uh, City of Manistee, Manistee County. We, we technically have to identify oh. our location. So I think, you know, if you're in the city, as an example, the city in Manistee County is sufficient. I'm also in the city. And that was Bruce again? Yes. Um, Kenneth Urban. Kenneth Urban, City of Manistee, Precinct 2, Manistee County. Blood type? Uh, uh, Karen Goodman. Karen Goodman, City of Manistee, Manistee County. Annie Jacobson. Annie Jacobson, City of Manistee, Manistee County. Okay, Jody Walter. Jody Walter, Stronic Township, Manistee County. Okay, and I am Kyle Mosier, Manistee County, City of Manistee. And we have Stacy. Bitework, Mark Miller, and Christina Bitecoat with us today. Okay, um, work session items. Uh, public comment on uh, work session related items. Don't see any members of the public joining us. Um, discussion on DDA bond priorities. So this is a work session, it is public, um, but um, I'd like to keep it a little bit less formal and um, the idea here is just to figure out how to spend, how to prioritize and, and, and how, what we want the bond money to, to do for the DDA district. Um, and uh, I'd like to just kind of keep this an open forum if possible and really hoping that people can kind of come to the table with some thoughts and ideas and so we can narrow it down. Um, does everybody have um, the two page um, sheet, sheets that uh, Christina sent, pages 12 and 13 from the uh, development plan? Yeah, there was also um, a page 14 that I found that had two other, unless you said something, had something that was more condensed, but I went to the development plan and there was three pages with okay. projects. I got the whole thing here too. So let me see, 12, 13. Oh yeah, you're right. Uh, page 14, uh, marketing of the downtown. Um, and then uh, events was the second thing on there. Also sort of marketing. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. Um, how do we wanna start, Christina? Well, I think that we probably should split this into two discussions, one on the River Street and the thoughts for that, Kyle, and then maybe uh, move over into the River Walk um, so okay. that we can kind of determine how those funds would be split. So we would have 1.25 million after the 250,000 to um, West Shore Community College. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess I'll just, my 30,000 foot view on this for 1.25 million, it'd be nice to see some things that um, are, are very noticeable that, that make a large impact. Um, and I don't wanna dictate what those are, but for, for example, you know, somebody that's been here before or several times comes into downtown and it just like, whoa, what, what happened here um, could, could be, um, turning some hardscape into softscape, maybe it's trees um, or um, uh, bump outs or like I said, I don't, I don't want to dictate the conversation, but uh, that's just my opinion uh, individually. What, what can we do that's going to have the largest impact on, um, on the district? Um, anybody have thoughts or how, any ideas on how we want to focus this? Well, I, I just personally, I started with where we've committed funds already. As an example, we've already committed to the uh, Riverwalk Plaza uh, the, behind the college. So I thought that should be a priority for funding. But that's already, that's already been removed from the 1.5, correct? I don't know. Yeah. So, the, so we're yeah. talking, so we've got 1.5 to work with. Uh, now we, we so we've allocated two hundred and fifty thousand for the Riverwalk Plaza. Okay, so that's, already, talk, that's already yeah. accounted for. Okay, yeah, 
All right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start calling on people. <laughs> well, if you just if you just want a list, I'll give you my number two. Okay. Uh, I think it's critical that we do something for property acquisition. Now, I'm not suggesting we do all five hundred thousand, but maybe we can buy. You know, if there something comes up that we want to uh, get our hands on and redevelop or connect with an entrepreneur or someone. So, would you suggest uh, beefing up our land acquisition fund? Exactly. Is that, can we do that with bond money? Can we set bonded money aside for land, land acquisition? That, that would be an ed question, but it's my understanding that really the stipulation is you have to expend it within that time period. Is that correct, Christina? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Within the three year period, I'd said. Yeah. Um, we do have 104,000 in there. The board should know about currently that we haven't utilized. So no, that's uh, still available. 104,000. Okay. By the park. Karen, say that again. I said, good, we can buy that park. The uh, Scary Art Park? Scary Art Park. <laughs> you know, and Karen, that's a great idea. Just, I just know the last time we reached out to them, they weren't interested in selling at that time. Oh, well, I know that when we were talking and putting stuff together, there, there was a... Uh, discussion on the about selling it so I wonder what changed I you know I re, I don't remember but um we had an in uh Kelly Grieve Grieve or whatever her last name is it's Grieve. one of her rel relatives mm -hmm. it was the goal between I just remember that they weren't ready so I guess given that we only have three years to to purchase maybe that uh we just I'll, I'll rescind my number two. <laughs> I was just going to suggest what if just as a placeholder, we stuck another hundred thousand into the land acquisition fund for sake of conversation. Yeah. So uh, I, I like the land acquisition. I have, I, I've thought uh, for a long time, we need to get uh, the Northern hotel moving. Uh, that will stimulate development up Washington Street. Uh, and, you know, I, I love the building. You know, I, I wish somebody would do something to it. Uh, Mark, you had said that there was interest in that. I mean, it, so my, my point is, if there's already interest and if, if uh, we don't need to do anything to move that along, then, you know, uh, you know, I think the property acquisition, you know, adding to that is a good idea in principle. If it's not moving along, I think it's a good idea in specific for for uh, Hotel Northern. Bruce, it's a time question that you're asking. Um, over the last five or five months or so, I've um, discussed the building with uh, probably about six different uh, interested prospective buyers. Uh, we had one uh, with a, a signed purchase agreement up until Friday. Uh, this one had resources, but the overwhelming amount of work uh, and the, um, um, uh, the incentive package that could be put together to incent development, um, he actually pulled the plug on it on Friday. And so I'm, or last week, and I learned of it Friday by talk, or talking to him. So we do not have anyone interested at the moment in, um, in that property. Uh, do know that it will take a significant investment uh, to bring portions of that building up to code and to be reutilized. Um, okay, well, I, I'm just penciling in 100,000 additional contributing to the land acquisition fund. Um, what else? I, um, I guess that what we would be looking at is like when, when we come into town, when we come down River Street, get past the vision, what are the things that will catch our eye, you know, um, if I'm a tourist and, and truly, um, you know, I, I know we've got um, 
light and stuff, you know, we're on it. But at the same time, it's like, it's just so frustrating that some of our owners um, have to be, I don't know, I don't know. You know, some of this, I, I personally, I just think it's a little bit of a passive aggressive move, but you know, it's like not having things that are just um, in such poor repair. I, I was very happy to see that the River Street Station put a coat of primer on, um, you know, it, it, even that made it look a hundred times better. Um, I haven't seen it lately, but um, it's things fully like painted that. Now. Cool. Things like that. You know, it's like, okay, like, are we going to move forward and get rid of the orange barricades? It would be really nice if we didn't have those. Yeah, um, that's going to happen. Good. All right. So that's another I thing. And then you get into, um, you know, what, what about if I'm walking River Street, you know, we've got a lot of, uh, is the city going to start working on um, some repair of these um, blocks? Um, or whatever pavers. you call them, pavers, yeah. That's on the DDA at this point. Okay, and then also I like the bump outs. Um, you know, I think a couple of them in that in in River Street would be pretty cool. I'd like to figure out some ways naturally to slow down traffic. Yeah. And I I think that bump outs would do that. Uh, I think the 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 dining platforms will help with that as well, and and we're working on that right now. Um, but uh, I think the bump outs with some, some greenery would be a nice thing. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. Greenery has always been something that I thought we lack. Um, you know, and I know that there's a lot of pros and cons to it, but it just really, really accents um, in the downtown area if we had something that was appealing like that. Uh, so, go ahead. No, I was going to say, what were you thinking of in terms of uh, concept for bump outs? Um, I was thinking um, crosswalk bump outs, right. meaning where the crosswalks protrude out into the street, um, essentially as far as a current uh, parking spot would. What is that, six or seven feet? So on either side of the crosswalk, uh, on both sides of the street of the crosswalk, bump outs would take place at, you know, I guess the first one would be probably division and the next one would be green bush one or two at green but and then so on down the block yes i was gonna i like i like the idea of bump outs i'd like to see it a little larger scale maybe we make it wide enough for a bench or something maybe that's a perfect location to get started with trees there um so i think i think we just need to think about it a little bit yeah well, I, and maybe I didn't describe, that, that's what I'm envisioning. I'm just talking about um, how far into the road they protrude would right. be. But yeah, I, um, that, that would be holding something up. <laughs> Bruce, is that from the MSU study? Because it that is, was, a, I would it just is exactly. To reference. Yes. Yeah, there was yes. some really wonderful, I mean, the visuals in, in that study, I think were really beautiful. And if there's anything that's again, like low hanging fruit that we might be able to absorb from that study that could make a really big difference quickly. I think that would be worth our time and, and money as well. I don't, I think, I don't, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think it would give it a, just a whole different look. I mean, it's just very appealing. Okay. I don't know how to attach a number on it. I think it would be fairly expensive because we're talking curb and gutter and, you know, pavers, but it, we could get some numbers on it. Jody? I think that's. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. That's okay. I, I think that's very worth doing. Uh, you know, part of it, there's uh, my suggestion is that we do something uh, big and noticeable, like the bump outs. I think those bump outs are 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 beautiful, and and you know they solve a lot of problems. Uh, and we do something that is also a you know, all the way down River Street. And, you know, one suggestion is those, uh, you know, we easily move those uh, five ton blocks, uh, you know, with front end loaders uh, to anchor the Christmas tree. Okay, so it didn't work, uh, but they're still really heavy. We can get planters for 10 or 15 foot trees and move them in during the spring and summer and move them back out so that we can plow the street, uh, plow River Street. Uh, and it would change the look of River Street. 
you know, they, they use planters in all sorts of urban areas. You know, you just pick slow growing trees or, or, you know, trees that are going to top out at 10 or 15 feet. But, you know, we could do something like that for, uh, you know, for all of River Street and then do something, you know, for specific areas like the bump outs. That's my suggestion. Thank I have, you, I have, Bruce, I have. Oh, I'm sorry, Karen. I'm, right. Jody's had her hand up. Go ahead, Jody. Let Jody no, let Jody go. It's, it's quite all right. I really just wanted to, first of all, uh, completely agree with Karen. I think that what really has to happen is, is if we're going to do a bond, that people need to see the fruits of that bond. I mean, like it has to be a visual thing, although I do understand putting allocating some money toward the uh, purchase of property. Um, I just out of because I don't know I'm asking a question how much will do we doing something to the river walk would that far exceed any money that we would have left over just can you I, be more specific cleaning it up fixing it up it looks run down so I guess yeah. I'm just wondering if there's I don't I think, know. I think the biggest need structurally for the river walk is to replace the deck boards. And it's, it's more than just the deck boards. It's, it's the framework underneath them. And I don't know if we have figures on that yet, but I okay. think that's the single largest thing that, that needs to be done. Kyle, a couple of years ago, Spicer did a, did a uh, review of the entire length of the <laughs> river walk. So they, they would have some information that I'm sure they could help us understand the cost. Okay, great. I, I, cause I, not to put words in your mouth, Jody, but I, I completely agree. So I'm making mm -hmm. a note here, river walk. Uh, I'm just going to put decking for keep it simple. Um, and my opinion is that's, that would be my number, my, my priority past the West Shore Community College thing. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I, I have to go along with Jody and ask, and ask the same question. So behind the insurance company where the public parking, parking is at, that um, those flower beds, that whole ramp, everything is, is bad. Yeah. So is that gonna be repaired? Um, plus also, I think a good power washing wouldn't hurt, <laughs> you know, um, it, it well, just- we're, we're not allowed to power wash the wood, so. Right. Um, um, well, the, the same same problem we ran in with Lighthouse Park. The because arsenic. of the chemicals. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mark? Yes, I, I just, uh, um, Kyle, ha I, I have the um, uh, PowerPoint from January that, that spells out uh, what's in the development plan. I can put that on the screen share that so that it can help focus um, attention, if you like, in different areas like river walks, streetscapes. Uh, would you like for me to put that up now? Yeah, that, that'd be fine. We have kind of a weak connection with you, Mark. Um, while Mark's doing that, uh, Ken, do you have any thoughts? Um, we do have, <clears throat> we do have, uh, $1.4 million in the plan for streetscape, which would include things like the bump outs. And, uh, you know, my, I, I think that uh, lighting is a big thing that we need to consider. Uh, so that would be very visible and, and beneficial. My question for Thad and for the group is whether <clears throat> whether this any of the funding from the Recovery Act is going to overlap or might be uh, available to do some of these things that would not have to be addressed through the bonding. Uh, I don't know what kind of money, if we've heard finally what kind of money is coming and what the city's planning on using that for, but uh, that might be a way to leverage some of the money that we would get from a bond if the city has funds that could pay for things that otherwise uh, would come out of this bond. Well, Ken, unfortunately, we're lacking two things. We have no guidance from the federal government on how we can spend the money. And we also 
have no information from the federal government as to how much we're going to get. So we're anticipating mid-May to at least get our guidance and hopefully shortly thereafter get an idea of how much we're going to receive. But there, you know, from the, the guidance that we have right now, I think there's some things that we could, uh, the city could partner with the DDA on. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Dad. I, so I, 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 and I agree. I think it, it, let's come up with our with our narrowed, I hate to call it a wish list, but priority list here. Um, and um, so right now I've got a hundred thousand dollars just as a placeholder for land acquisition. And I've got bump outs. Don't have a number for that yet. And river walk decking. Um, and I think the um, the uh, ADA accessible ramp that uh, Karen was referring to uh, should be in there somewhere as well. But. I, I would suggest we, we, we just maybe make it streetscape, river street streetscape versus just bump outs. That might give us a little bit more flexibility as we, as we view the projects. I guess I thought that streetscape was a little bit vague. I mean, because to me, a streetscape is you're redoing the whole street. Right. Yeah, it could, it could be. What uh, is, yeah. Thad, what is the level of specificity that, that, the, uh, that we need to describe these uh, projects in that will satisfy uh, bonding? I, I don't, as specific as we can, but I, I think if we just, as an example, use streetscape and under we put X for bump outs, maybe, you know, X for potted trees or whatever. Okay. And, you know, that's the only thing I'm suggesting. Is okay. We, I, I'm all about the bump outs, but I think we need to do a, a few other things along there, along okay. there too. I think right now it's, to me, it's what kind of a number do we want to assign to that streetscape bump out concept? Hard to know if we don't know what one costs, I guess. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. So. And I think that's what this is about. If we set these priorities while the bond, while we're getting the bond, it gives us that time to get the estimates in for the work that we want to do. And then we may have to take something off the list or add something to the list, depending on how that goes. So we have to have the priority list in order to obtain those numbers. So that's kind of what this is today, I okay. think, Kyle. Thank you. Annie, what's on your list? Um, the streetscape. Um, okay. I, I love the idea of, of the bump outs, like, like I was saying, that the MSU study, I think, has, has been really, really helpful um, for me to help visualize um, what's possible, right? Um, and so I'm really, really grateful for that study. And so um, the bump outs, the greenery, I love the idea of adding some greenery. I also, I think my, I think my number two, a very close number two is, is Riverwalk, um, like, like Jody was, was saying, to, to clean up the Riverwalk. Um, I walk that most days, right? And so I, I, I see very clearly um, that, it, that it needs some, some sort of cleaning up or maybe even just like a wider view of like its, its concept, you know what I mean? Just a, I'm not sure, <laughs> um, but, no, but I think good. it needs some love. I think it needs some help there. Um, and I also think that we have some community groups who would be willing to participate in, in some upkeep if, um, if, if that was somehow facilitated, not that we need to be the ones to do it, but I, I think that there's some, some interest from our community to help keep that beautiful um, if, if we're able um, to allow them to do that. And I don't know where that permission would need to come from, but I don't think that it needs to all be DDA. And, and I, think, I think that we need some help for okay. sure. Thank you. To let you know that at one time we had the um, Ladies Garden Club was interested um, when we were talking about you know how to take care of like the plants and flowers and stuff down there because they always look so terrible. They were willing to come in and start taking sections and kind of um, do it on their own. The other idea that was out there in regards to the trees and the planters was that we can um, put those out for memoriams. 
you know, families or whoever want to purchase and place one of those, um, there was interest in that too. So there's a way of revenue, you know, getting some revenue on these too. Okay. Any new, new ideas that we haven't talked about or that are on this uh, development plan that we want to highlight? Hey, Kyle. You mm -hmm. turn your stuff. Sorry, Christine and I are too close. <laughs> um, we haven't talked about rental rehab. I know that's on there. And obviously housing is a huge issue. So I don't know if anyone's considered that. It uh, looks like there's 600,000 for um, that. Cause I know if you look at some of the buildings downtown and I mean, I don't know how many owners are open to that type of um, rehab on their second stories. But if we had some funding that we could work with, whether it's the state MEDC or what have you, but if the DDA had some of that funding to get more people in the downtown district, I think that that would help a lot with many things. So I just want to throw that out there for consideration as well. Okay. Stacy, could I ask, are you talking about a, uh, a grant fund? No, it, it's, it's within our, um, I, I don't know, it says provide a cost sharing funding to property owners is what's listed in the development plan. Cost sharing, okay. It was the idea, yeah, it was an idea of like kind of being able to kind of put money forth for them um, if they couldn't do the rehab on their own. Okay. Any other ideas? Yeah, um, just following up on Stacy's, I'd like the idea of, um, you know, the housing downtown. Unfortunately, when Tyler was here, he contacted all the building owners and property owners and no one was really interested in it. So we'd have to do some campaigning to get them on board. And, uh, and there is an MEDC program still in effect for rental rehab. And I think it was up to six, uh, 60,000 or 65,000 per unit that was available. Wow. Yeah, there, there are some, if I recall, there were some roadblocks to it. I mean, number one, it, the, the owner couldn't occupy the space, which is kind of a, I remember being an issue for some folks. Yeah. Um, and again, I don't know the issues. I just remember there wasn't much, if any, interest in it. So yeah. while I support it, we'd, we'd have to really twist some arms to see if we can't get some traction. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Tamara. Um, Tamara, we're just kind of running through a list of items here that um, would be priority um, in in everybody's minds here for how to spend uh, $1.25 million. So if you have any wish list, so far we've got um, uh, streetscape uh, improvements, which would possibly include uh, bump outs with planters and trees, um, uh, river walk uh, uh, decking, um, and uh, now rental rehab. So if you have anything on your wish list. Anybody else? Has anything else come to the top? So, I, I, uh, can I suggest one other thing? It, it, uh, the river walk. What we would like people to do is connect uh, their their buildings uh, to the river walk. Uh, you know, for restaurants to have seating back there, for uh, there to be housing. Uh, there's also some work that that we can do. I don't know how much of the land uh, we own, but uh, we we can. I'm pretty sure in some places widen the river walk with uh, using retaining walls uh, to create more seating and park spaces and performance spaces back on the river walk uh, and. Hopefully, what we do with West Shore uh, will demonstrate ways that businesses can connect to that river walk. Uh, but you know, we whatever we do needs to demonstrate how to you know how we would like that done. 
uh, and, you know, in a few areas. I, and I think that the West Shore uh, Plaza, I think will be a, a huge improvement and example of how the, the connection from River Street to the Riverwalk uh, can, be, can be used. So I, I, I agree with you. Anybody? Is that is that park um, next to what's going to be Fakanos? Is that is that part of the that's part of DDA, isn't it? Do we oversee that park? That's the city marina property. Okay. I was just thinking when you mentioned um, retaining walls and stuff, it'd be nice to build out a nice retaining wall and then put cement in and then have seating in that park as well uh, for people to sit. Okay. I'll, uh... Hey, Kyle. Yeah. Obviously, we've had a lot of discussion on some of the Riverwalk stuff. Um, would it be, I don't know if I know how we all love plans, but would it be something to hire, um, I don't know, a company to kind of give an overview um, of what the river walk could look like landscaping, you know, kind of an aesthetic look of everything, because if West Shore kind of gets theirs going, how do we connect that all the way down to the start? So it keeps going and we start building that momentum that way. Um, or if we did like an RFP or something along those lines, I don't know, just to kind of give us that vision and start chipping away at that because we do have a lot of these funding. And then in addition to that, um, I think, Annie, you said kind of the low hanging fruit and I, I have the lovely MSU study in my hand as we speak, but I mean, some of the things that, you know, we could do, or it, it was the small town rural development conference is some of the things that we've packaged together out of that study are kind of the signage, the maps, um, you know, updating the bathrooms and kind of what they, and it, I think that's going to be a quick thing that can show some value that doesn't cost a lot of initial funding out of that bond. So I just want to throw that out there as well. I love the idea that both those ideas, especially the landscape architect for the river walk, it seems kind of like low hanging fruit to have somebody come in there and um, provide some, some guidance, guidance and a plan moving forward. And give us a, in, in that plan, we can even ask them to go, okay, give us a five year plan. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we can, how you know, we can start with this big piece, and then what do we do to continue to improve upon it, or even sustain it? You know, from one year to the next, you yeah, got different opinions. Really dumb it down for maintenance. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Great. Speak up if anybody has anything. Anything else on your list, Thad, that you'd like to see? No, uh, I mean, I'd like to see a lot more, but I'm yeah. being realistic also. Yeah, I, I think this is a great start. I mean, we can spend all this money just on one of these, um, but just to go over it, I've got um, streetscape, bump outs, crosswalks with planters, uh, river walk decking, ADA ramp by the public lot, uh, rental rehab, uh, deck slash retaining wall by Marina and Fricano's West, and then landscape architect for Riverwalk and West Shore Plaza project. What was the last thing you added, Stacy? after that, after the landscape architect? Um, just some of the smaller kind of maps and signage, like the wayfinding and by the bathrooms by goodies. Okay. If you look at that study, there's a couple simplistic things that I don't think would cost a lot of money, but obviously would have a really good impact. Yeah. Um, okay. I, 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 are we doing anything with the fountain? Is there going to be water, not water? Um, yeah, it's, it's, um, okay. it's, it's ready to go. Okay. Because uh, another really cool thing, and this is what I thought for Scary Park, if we could take it over, would have been to put like uh, Cadillac has. They have that um, warming station with a fireplace in their in their common area there. It's just really a nice, um, you know, in evenings, uh, so good, cool summer evening, they have a gas fire going or in the winter, you know, it's a gathering spot. So 
I thought that would have been cool, but if we can't get the darn park, I don't know where else you put it. Well, I think we should just stay on that that piece of property and um, never know. I, I agree with it. We don't want to put in too much infrastructure if we don't own it, but uh, right. Right. I, like, I like that idea, especially since nine months out of the year it's winter here anyway. <laughs> Does it does it make sense or is it too much detail to call out lighting specifically in the streetscape work? Um, thanks, Ken. I meant to ask you, can you be specific on what you were uh, talking about with lighting? Well, uh, LED lighting uh, for the, the street fixtures. But it, I think really it would take a, maybe a lighting consultant to come in because as I've done more research on this, uh, our historic downtown, what makes it historic is the, uh, the building and the cornices and the, the roof line. Uh, some lighting consultants uh, say, if that's one thing you're trying to highlight, then maybe rooftop or roof edge lighting is a way to make that stand out at night. Uh, so, but that really would take a lighting consultant to come in and tell us how to do that. Uh, it would make sense uh, since we're in Northern Michigan to have a lighting consultant tell us whether it's uh, possible to get uh, lighting that will preserve dark sky as much as possible uh, to prevent okay. light pollution. So, but that takes a lot more expertise than we have as individuals. So. Okay, I got that down. Thank you. I agree. I agree with that. Uh, could I just also add to that? Uh, we need to be thinking about lighting the, the river walk too. Uh, you know, if we want to make that uh, area accessible and used, uh, we also want it accessible and used at night. Do you mean additional lighting from what's already there, Bruce? Yes, or? yes. Okay. Yeah, there, there are, uh, you know, dark stretches through there. And if we're going to use it at night, I, you know, I always wonder about safety. I know that we want boats to be able to, you know, hook up and uh, tie off, uh, you know, without any barriers being there. But um, if there are people out at night, if they're going to be wandering around at night, you start to wonder about, you know, people walking right off the edge of the river walk there behind the, um, the hotel, uh, Manistee Inn and, um, over by the marina those those are large areas of of no protection well you kind of have to have that at a marina though yeah that's in that place there's in that plus the fishermen love that area they sit right yeah. there i think by and large 98 percent of the river walk is pretty safe railing yeah and I think that all the river walk in the DDA district is pretty well lit. There's some that are burned out, but I um, guess I got to walk down there at night now. And Karen, you're, you're right. I mean, the, there is a safety risk there. Uh, we're from Wisconsin originally, and every year in La Crosse, which is on the Mississippi, you get uh, at least a couple people that wander off the edge of the river walk there into the Mississippi and usually don't come out. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, how are we doing, Christina? I think the list is looking very good. I think you've probably spent all the money already. <laughs> I think we've spent twice the money, but. Um, I think we just need to add some numbers to this. What's the best way to do that? I think we start with Spicer like Thad suggested. Yeah, you know, we're just gonna have to get a little bit more specific on what we want, like how many bump outs, where, what do we want them to look at, look like, things of that nature. Then okay. Together, maybe we could do it in a, a two phase also, you know, it's like, here's where we, where we start with the bump outs, if, you know, depending on the price, if it's really, really high, then it's like cut it back and say, here's where our primary areas are. 
that we mm -hmm. want to address. And then if we can, you know, three or four years from now, we'll try more. But because I think that's going to probably be about a half a million itself. If we did every intersection. Okay. Well, I'm happy with this list. If uh, unless anybody wants to add anything, no, I think it's a, a good list. I like it. Cool. I'll make a big impact. Does that give us something to work with, Christina? Yeah, I was just thinking maybe we could even contact MSU who did some of those original studies um, to see if they have bump outs or if they have different ones to, you know, with price structures and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll start doing some research on that. Okay. That's a great idea too. There's different type of bump outs. So, you know, what, what can we get paid for and then get best bang for our buck? And also some of these other counties like Travers that has done those, maybe they would have some information for us too. Mm -hmm. We can contact other DDAs. I'm yeah, sure they'd know. share information. Yeah, I don't know if Ludington's done anything like that or not. Yeah. Holland. How, Kyle, what, how do we want to proceed on the river walk? That decking concerns me. Or are we going to obtain that quote from Spicer and move from there? Or we had talked about Ipewood uh, previously, um, looking at long lasting. I think we should we should see what Spicer has. Let's start there. If if they did attach any numbers to it, I don't know if I don't recall if they did or if they just identified the issues. Okay, I can. Um, I was talking to Chris on something else anyway, so I can ask her if she can look through the file, unless Thad has that somewhere else that no. I'm not aware. Okay. Oh. Okay. And another fundraiser: buy a piece of the Riverwalk. You know, Karen Goodman on a board. I'll buy a board for a hundred bucks. <laughs> you want to be walked on all day? I, I might as well be. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be something we, um, once we get kind of cost on the river walk and everything that we could engage um, community foundation? Good idea. I think that'd be great. I've been told by folks on the foundation that that would be a good use of some funds. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could get some corporate sponsors. Yeah. Some private dollars. If we, I think if we have a plan and it, it has a rendering, it's easier to, I mean, the bond, the bond money is good, but it only goes so far. It might be easier to sell it um, to um, corporate sponsors or something like that if we have some stuff uh, in renderings. Okay, well, I'm happy with this. Everybody, everybody happy? I'm always, I'm always happy. Okay, <laughs> good. Well, um, the, I see item C here for other. I don't know what other is unless anybody wants to add any other. Wasn't that your offer to buy drinks at TJ's? Yeah. Yeah, five, let's do it. Five thirty. Why? <laughs> maybe maybe five fifteen. <laughs> well, you're five. I got okay. All right, I can make it happen. Right. <laughs> okay. Actually, I, I did. I did really have something for other. If that's okay. <laughs> I probably oh, you say it. Five o'clock threshold. <laughs> I just wanted to update everybody on social districts. We um, are working, our team's working on that. We do have a proposal and we have a few things um, we've got to check on, but we have, I think a 12 page proposal right now and would like to um, hopefully get that on city council mid-May if we can go ahead and do that once we get a couple more things that we need to find in that proposal. But so that's moving. And then the platforms, um, we've talked about those too. So just a little update is we're running into some roadblocks a little bit because of um, some of the barricades that we're looking at. There's obviously not a lot of inventory out there anymore. So we're, we're working on some potential opportunities for that and hoping we can have something pretty soon. We'll see. So thank you, Stacy. Any questions? Comments? 
Okay, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Karen. Second? Second. Thanks, Thad. All right. Um, thank you, everybody, and uh, stay tuned. See you. All right. Thank you. See ya. See ya.